I didn't even know that noodles will soak and the entire bit will go into the water. I kept saying, what about the top part which is sticking out? Really, if I can do it, anyone can. Hey everyone, so just to get the ball rolling and just get everybody warmed up, we thought we'll start with a fun rapid fire and this one I'm really nervous, nervous of because uh, you know when you have a wittier and the wittiest person rather on the other side, oh my god I just want to like duck, every time I'm interviewing her I'm always nervous, um, so I'm just keeping fingers, legs, everything crossed to ensure that uh, the answers uh, are, are um, I know that the answers are going to be really good, but still, I'm just nervous. After having kids, you should keep your legs crossed when you laugh, as all mothers know. So yeah, it's a good idea, but let's begin. Now, now everybody gets it why I'm nervous, right? She comes up with these one-liners and then you don't know how to come back as a host. Beginning with the rapid fire and warming everyone up. One dish that describes your state of mind right now. Scrambled eggs because uh, I'm clearly scrambling to get everything right at this point of time. So yeah, I would say scrambled eggs. Acting or cooking, the one you're better at? Uh, definitely acting there. I have three expressions. I can even with great difficulty pull off a fourth, but cooking, I can't really do anything. I've made uh, one, I think one dish, noodles with salmon and that was it. So yeah, I definitely act it. Most underrated sabji or ingredient in your kitchen? Parval. My mother keeps insisting that we should all eat parval. Every time I go to a house, there'll be fish curry and there'll be prawns, but she'll say, try the parval, try the parval. So yeah, I would say that is. Okay. Good. What's tougher, writing a book or talking about it? Definitely talking about it. Uh, people who write tend to want to hide behind their desk. They don't, they are sort of, I would say almost misanthropes who don't really like interacting with other people, which is why they're building up all these universes. So yeah, definitely talking about a book. But I didn't write this book. I just, you know, commissioned that this was my wonderful tweak team that put this together and Varnika. So I can talk about this happily. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One subject you can't get Twinkle to eat. Uh, I can eat everything. I mean, I can, yeah. I, if it, I can even, not only a sabzi, I can eat anything. If it moves and I can kill it, I can eat it. No problem. Okay. Your reaction when you plan the meals and everyone frowns when they know what's for dinner? So for some reason, I think women's liberation has brought me to a point where I keep wondering and complaining that why is this my job? But it still hasn't elevated me to a point where I stop doing it. So yes, I feel responsible and I'm, uh, then I'll, you know, try and do my best to make sure that they are happy. But why is this my job is still something that I question again and again. You said in one of your interviews that Aksha is very good at cooking. He knows how to fry your brains, boil your blood. What's the one thing you guys fight about the most as far as food and family meals are concerned? I think it comes partly from him being Punjabi and me being partly Gujarati. So Punjabis need to have enough food on the table to feed half of Chandigarh. That's, you know, the way they've grown up. I'm half Gujarati. So for me, one vati of dal and one vati of sabzi is enough. So we quarrel about quantities of food. And uh, I remember a time when I started bugging him because he was eating too many avocados. So I said, do you know how expensive avocados are? And I think he lost it. He said, do you think Shah Rukh Khan's wife... That's Gujarati. Wife that's Gujarati. <laughs> That's Gujarati, right? So he said, do you think she talks to him about the price of tomatoes and all that? I said, I don't know. And as I see them talking about carpets and curtains, maybe they talk about vegetables. Who knows? So I think that was one point. Uh, right. Yeah, this avocado is a bone of contention. Wow. And even when it's Akshay Kumar and Twinkle Khanna's household, the prices of avocado matter. I think that if you are somebody who is uh, living a life that is slightly grounded, or at least trying to have a life that's grounded as much as you can, within your circumstances, then it's important to have a balanced viewpoint about everything. Absolutely. I, I, and I want to raise my kids in that manner as well. I don't think that, yes, of course we can buy avocados, but I mean, why waste anything is what I feel. Right. Food is associated with a lot of fear when our kids are younger. Our dinner table conversations are more about, you know, a separate meal for parents. You know, I'm on a diet. My you know, I'm on, I'm on all of these fat diets. This is low carb. This is high protein. And conversations like this. Um, and I remember you, you know, in one of your interviews, you said that for the longest time to ensure that your kids eat right, you told Arab that some fingers on this mountain lady were French fries and he never ate up. He never ate French fries after. So 
how do you instill the fear of you know how do you get rid of that fear of food uh, from children no oh, no i didn't tell him that the mutton lady chops his fingers so that he doesn't eat french fries i was just uh, playing a prank i was just scaring him for the sake of it i do that often enough okay. um much to my husband's horror but um, i think that instilling a healthy relationship with food in your child also comes about from when they look at you i don't think that i have the healthiest relationship with food at least not while i was growing up but when i and i look at but when i look at my daughter and i think with her i've never told her finish your plate this needs to be done i've always asked her talk to your tummy is it full is it empty it's a very simple thing but she seems to have a healthy relationship with food also i don't know whether these things some of this i think is partly genetic you're born either like a large eater who enjoys food or you're born with someone who has a small appetite i don't think that that is something um you can train beyond a point you can definitely streamline it but i don't think you can irrevocably you know remove it or change it right and and coming to your um, you know you've always spoken about your perpetual battle with weight and and like i said with with parents um, you know we either threaten our children ke khalo warna you know police will catch you or you know eat this this is healthy and we we kind of label the foods that we feed our children right so how do you go about ensuring that you're not labeling or typecasting foods because that's that's the language that we that they're growing up with i mean i definitely do label food in terms of healthy and a treat and uh, so but the nothing is banned from the household so it's not like you can't eat a chocolate or you can't eat ice cream or you can't but definitely it's an indulgence and you can have it you know once in three days or once a week or you know we definitely order in a pizza once in a while so i don't think that there are any labels about this being terribly wrong and you can't touch it and this being healthy a balance is all that we can really try for and and that's what i strive to do